in this beautiful morning I want to uh, give you more insight into the Lake Ontario. The Lake Ontario of the border region in the United Kingdom. Goedemorgen. Kingdom, this uh, dog developed to hunt foxes, especially, but also badger and all the other game and chase them into the fells. The sled carriers is also known as fell bones. So the fell is like a, a rocky uh, crevice. Very hard ground. I can also uh, tell you it's unbeatable. And therefore, you needed a dog that was mentally and physically very tough so it could handle itself in that uh, small but hard arena because if it engaged a fox there. Either the fox bolts, and then the hunters could uh, take care of it. But otherwise, it had to handle itself in those crevices. Also, good to know that uh, the red fox, that is the species of fox living there, has uh, different sizes according to the terrain. Uh, and uh, the food available in the Lakeland uh, area, also where the, uh, the border area and, uh, and other areas, for example, the Petterdorf area, this is a, a, a black, smooth coated Petterdorf terrier, also known as the black, smooth coated fell terrier, is of that area. So the northern part of England towards the Scottish border. There, the uh, foxes are very big. So, the type of fox they would engage will be quite an adversary for many a dog, but not for these dogs. These dogs are bred to do, to do a job. They do a job. And very often they kill the fox already in the fell and they took him out or, or left him there dead. Problem solved. So why was the problem to be solved? Why couldn't they let the foxes be, their, be themselves and uh, keep them yeah, alive? The foxes are killing the livestock. And I would say, then one would say, yeah, perhaps then the switch from chickens to something else. You could uh, keep other livestock like cows or uh, sheep. But the foxes were that big that they also killed the sheep. So the lambs, of course, sometimes also adult sheep or, or young adult sheep were killed. So that made it, uh, made it a big a problem to keep the foxes even uh, if you disregarded the poultry, the hens, the chickens, cocks that they kept it also killed sheep and that could also be in a region that uh, the foxes became so big you see this often eh? as if there is plenty of food available and also if the temperature is uh, colder that species become bigger for example with, uh, with grizzly bears living close to the region where the salmon travels upstream the weather is more cold so a bigger body is favorable to keep the warmth in and at the same time, 
there's plenty of food available, which is rich in nutrition, which can make your dog, no, which can make the the species of bear, in this case the grizzly bear, but also the foxes bigger. It's the same with uh, dogs, eh? if you have a pup that has uh, very limited access to food, it can't uh, grow as big as a pup that does have enough uh, food to grow. If you overfeed your dog, it will get even bigger, but uh, then you can also get a fat dog, and the fat dog will uh, put stress on the joints that st are still developing. And especially with a lively breed like a pet, it'll tell you, it, would, it wouldn't be a wise choice. But in my opinion, if you have a better little cat there your pup and you feed him good food and he can express his activity level so it's not kenneled up but just uh, giving ample uh, time to roam and to uh, run and all the other stuff I couldn't overfeed him if I wanted to but if you give him like treats and other stuff all the time I can imagine but if you give good food just protein rich, no, no, no silly things like sugar and all the other stuff uh, added. Then uh, yeah, I find them quite easy to keep like this. This was with uh, at liberty my feet. So free access to food, but also free access to uh, exercise. <laughs> okay, so back to the Lake Ontario. So. What did they develop? They developed a wire-haired uh, terrier, a little bit uh, resembling that of a, no, a wired hat, a wire hat, rough coated uh, fox terrier, only uh, smaller and black and tan. But in this case, uh, the black is not the main color, as it is in the pinches, for example, or the German. Yacht area, but it's more like a saddle. Sometimes, nowadays, you see all black uh, uh, Lakeland terriers, which could also very well be. But if you look at the Lakeland terrier of now, it's mostly a show dog. So it's a dog that the standard standards. But if you look then, it's a little bit smaller than the fox area, so a little bit lower, but it is at least sturdy if you look at the head, and especially if you look at the temperament. The temperament is very friendly, uh, like uh, almost all terriers with children, even more laid back than for example a fox terrier or Jack Russell in house if it gets ample exercise. So if you want, uh, you could see this as the working version of the, the Lakeland Terrier. This is my black smooth coated felt terrier. He's now 11 months old. BSL Estacado. Hey, he's sniffing something. I think he's, he sniffed uh, a bitch in heat. And uh, so, very comparable in size and also. In the character, I think the Lakeland Terrier, being a little bit more of a show terrier these days, has a shorter back as compared to this one. So more uh, uh, length of back gives more strength, more body to the dog. Um, yeah, what to say? They say they uh, are uh, not as quarrelsome as most terriers are, but if uh, another dog tries to dominate them, they will get to uh, see some uh, real terrier uh, temperament. The Lakeland Terrier, look at this beautiful field. The Lakeland Terrier is not only uh, a show dog. Some strains are still kept to work, which is uh, very nice. And next to the Petadil Terrier, you've got also uh, a long haired uh, version, rough coated uh, version, so not the broken coated version. And the rough coated version is often a very uh, 
the black, but sometimes also a red uh, coloration. And that closely resembles that of the working lake lanterna. Also, these species are still interbred. In the origin of this um, uh, Petrodil Terrier, Lakeland Terrier, Border Terrier, Bellingdale Terrier, and also some other Boer Terrier breeds were used, but the Lakeland Terrier is uh, closely related to the Petrodil. Um, Lakeland Terrier is not normally found as a smooth coated variant, variety, but uh, even that could be uh, the case if you look at their working strains, especially because they are interbred. The Lake Terry is also a good choice uh, if you have one of working strains to add to uh, lurches, like uh, most fell terriers can be, especially in the, if you need a dog with a rougher coat. A Lake Terrier always has a now, almost always has that uh, long, rough coat that uh, would add extra protection if you wanted to, uh, a dog to go to uh, brushes without excessive size of the hairs. So just a functional coat that you could add if you cross it to, for example, whippet or uh, more often done to a greyhound to bring a dog that uh, could easily chase a fox, but uh, also dispatch of him very easily. So, uh, with whippets, pure whippets, often they don't uh, dispatch uh, big foxes on themselves. They can chase them, but killing them is a different matter. But if you add a little bit of a smaller dog, for example the Lake Terrier, that is a fox killer, then it will be a different game altogether. So whereas uh, a Lake Terrier or a Petterdale Terrier for that matter could not often uh, chase up uh, a not uh, rounded fox, they won't because uh, fox is such a tremendous uh, specimen, very nimble, very fast, but a whippet or a greyhound will easily catch up to them uh, much faster and combining those breeds brings you a uh, a lurcher that's very able to uh, to do whatever it needs to do. So it could also be chasing hares, especially if it's a greyhound uh, type of uh, dog. But uh, a lurcher with a first cross would have very much trouble chasing of hares. But rabbits could be uh, quite easily done. A hare is also a magnificent uh, specimen, very nimble, very fast, big heart, big hind legs, which makes it uh, a force to be reckoned with in the nature. A lot of pers person will tell you, yeah, my dog can uh, chase and kill hares. Of course they can, but sometimes it is more luck than something else, or it's an old or hurt hare that's just caught, or, very, or a very young one. But a hare in this prime is very hard to catch. Sometimes even with two dogs. It's not, you need a very fast dog. They can also uh, uh, cover a terrain. And one must imagine, even if it catches it, eh, can it do it the same day or the next day again? Because uh, sometimes the terrain is that rough, they will hurt themselves badly. That's also one of the reasons lurches were made, because uh, a greyhound or a whippet for that case is often purely based on speed, but speed on a, yeah, a terrain that's very favorable for their paws. Whereas in nature, yeah, the terrain differs a lot, and if your paws are then strong, strong enough, they will be injured. And if you get too many injuries or Injures at very high speed, the effects can be uh, very detrimental. So the Lakeland Terrier is a breed that can, uh, can be found as both uh, 
a show uh, line that he would uh, take to uh, FCE e, uh, registered uh, shows train and get it uh, get his confirmation checked out <laughs> if you would like that but uh, could also be found in the field working foxes sometimes badger and in the states perhaps uh, also other uh, quarry like uh, raccoons or in uh, the more eastern regions also a lot of uh, northern region also a lot of uh, coon hounds so about the coon the raccoon i mean here and this uh, found in the united states of america it's also a uh, transition to europe because they use it for fur and uh, place it into yeah fur factories so to say but some escaped or some were uh, placed out by hunters to have an uh, additional quarry i don't know but i think it's uh, first they escaped from fur farms the same that the raccoon uh, dog that uh, did not escape from fur fa farms that much but it uh, was found in asia and uh, russia and it just traveled along to the western borders and now it's found in uh, germany for example but also a lot in uh, the northern countries like finland sweden and it's also hunted a lot because what that, do that does if you add a new species it will be uh, if it's successful it will be destroying the local species the same is uh, the case with the nutria which is the, one of the biggest if not the biggest rats the species look like looks like a beaver but with a rat tail it's destroying the habitat of the indigenous the real uh, beaver and other species it was also a fur uh, producing rodent that escaped and nowadays they are found throughout the entirety of Europe like a pest and then <laughs> if you want to kill that with a terrier you need a different type of terrier his dad killed Nutria quite a lot so just to give some insights of uh, what you could do also a lake and terrier of working strange could be easily uh, Way to work. Goedemorgen. Way to work. Nutria. Water rat. All terriers that are healthy should be able to dispatch rats. But the Nutria, just look it up, is a big, very big rat. Can uh, be in excess of 10 kilograms easily. So that's a uh, gives you some uh, insight and also if you look at those uh, teeth you uh, can uh, use to uh, chew through uh, very heavy vegetation and also uh, use to dig a little bit and defend themselves you can imagine that you need a, a good dog to take care of that so uh, I hope you liked this uh, video about the lake Ontario I try to uh, cover uh, both the show and, uh, and also the working capabilities of this uh, magnificent breed, also the history and the purpose for which it was bred and it uh, gave you a modern day example of, uh, of the confirmation oh, I got a little bit uh, hay fever of uh, this breed, if you look at this uh, Food colored petardil without a coat, you can better see its build. This is what a working strain lake terrier would look like beneath all those fur. So, a sturdy, strong head, a good muscled body without exaggeration, a good length of leg and uh, back. 
and a flexible uh, chest. There's also something that I could tell you. The fell terriers have, uh, especially the petadils, but also some other breeds, including the lakers, have a chest that is able to compress more than other dogs to just squeeze them into the, yeah, the crevices of hard places that don't uh, give. And therefore it was able to follow its quarry deeper than normal. That's a good uh, thing to mention as well. You seen something? Must be a mice or something. Suk suk. Okay. Let's end it at that. Have a nice day.